Don't be so quick to discredit bro science. Oftentimes, it's rooted in truth. The issue is they just don't know how to explain it properly. Let's Sometimes go, the bro. Bros Let's knows. go. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Bros you know what I read the other day? Let's hear that it. That blew my mind. Really? Yes. So, and we can get into other bro science that- Are you just hyping true. this up? Or are you saying no, it really this blew your mind? No, weird. Okay. So this is something I heard bodybuilders say that I would laugh and scoff at. So I'm going to I'm gonna say, say it, and I guarantee you'll have the same reaction, right? That pre-contest- Eating only fish as your source of protein thins the skin. How many oh. times have you heard that? Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Thins yeah. the skin. Tilapia was always the one of choice. Yeah, right? and so you're like, oh, come on. That's so stupid, bro, science. Or okay, trip off this. Oh, wow. So there's different types of collagen protein. There's type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4. If you only eat fish as your source of protein, you're only getting <laughs> type 1. Chicken and beef have type 2 and 3. Eggs have type 4. Type 2, 3, and 4, if you don't get enough of those, the, the collagen matrix in under the skin, your tendons, your ligaments, actually slowly starts to break down. So you indeed get thinner skin. Now, this is not healthy. You can increase your risk of injury because your joints and tendons and ligaments aren't as strong. But the look that the bodybuilders have been describing, wow, that's real. And so is that all just to kind of get the veins to pop more and all that kind of stuff? Well, yeah, you want yeah, yeah, you want yeah. your skin to look like paper. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, you want to look as lean, like lean I've and never had translucent. Well, yeah, the, the, yes. the leaner the leaner or the thinner your skin looks, the the more vascularity, the more striation you're going to see in the yeah. muscle, and so and of course in a competition of trying to show off. Your leanness is uh, that's a so now great if you eat jellyfish, do you become translucent? No, no. Oh, I don't know. I know. But I read that, I was, it blew my mind because that's one thing I heard bodybuilders say that I completely, completely discredited. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, you know, you know, and I remember when I actually used to talk about that. It, so my counter argument to be like, that's so full of shit, it's not true. What it is is that tilapia is so low calorie. Yes. Mm -hmm. They switch over to that and, and they, just so get leaner. they just get leaner. And so they could have done that with ground turkey or anything else like that, but wow. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that wild? Yes. So so you know why bro science we're on to something. So bro science or bodybuilding, you know, whatever wisdom. Oftentimes, there's some truth in what they say. The challenge or the problem is that the way they explain it many it times makes it stupid. Many times it's like that. Yeah. Actually, so like, That's so a, there's a there's a. I mean, this happens a lot. Um, this is again, this is my my problem I have with like the hardcore science community. It's just like, you know, I mean, you think of like. Um, uh, Eastern medicine and stuff like that too, right? Yeah. So the the terminology that they've used to try and explain it, they know something's there. They've been they've been watching it for in the in Eastern medicine time, hundreds or thousands of years. It's been passed thousands. on. So obviously there's something yeah, there. This balances your chi, right? But how they communicate it and stuff like that. I remember, I remember this when Katrina and I first started dating, and you know she she comes from that she's a massage therapy background and she would say things to me and i would just kind of like chuckle on her brother and she's like what like she's like absolutely this is what i'm and yeah, like you like, store emotions in your hips yeah yeah like right and so you know i'd kind of scoff at like the, the the explanation but you know as time has come on has gone on uh, you we've we've start to uh, accumulate more and more science to support what they're saying maybe not how they say it yes but what they're saying is becomes more and more true as the science starts to unfold, and I just that's why I'm like so careful when you you knock on some somebody that has that I, provides I had, info like I that. I had a huge discussion with a surgeon that I trained years ago because I had in my in my old studio, I had an acupuncturist in there, and then I'd have you know clients. So I had a lot of, at that time clients that were surgeons and doctors, so Western medicine, Eastern medicine, and one of my clients, this this old school surgeon who you know he first became a surgeon in the '60s, like he was about to retire, and those back then those old dogs were like kings. Like you were a surgeon in those times, like what you said was like like law, and it was totally different. So he had this kind of, and I love him to death. He's a good friend of mine still, but he's this really cocky attitude. So he'd come in and. I train him, and the acupuncturist would walk in and have an appointment. He'd laugh, <laughs> you know, the, you know, pseudoscience. He'd say or something like that. Yeah. And so I'd be like, "Oh, come on, man!" Like, you know, a lot of people see value. So anyway, we got in this discussion once, and he goes, "What is this like chi? Like, where's the evidence for chi?" And I said, "Okay, well, let me ask you this as a surgeon." I said, "What is referred pain?" And he goes, "Oh, well, that's when something hurts in one place, but it means that there may be an issue somewhere else." Classically. Left arm pain could mean that you're having a heart attack or heart pain. Right. I said, and what do you think that's related to? He goes, well, your, your central nervous system. I said, well, what do you think the needles are doing? 
I said, it's, it's affecting the CNS. And maybe they explained it through chi, yeah. but maybe what they're doing is working with the CNS to block pain or produce more endorphins or whatever. And I remember the look on his face, like, huh, that could kind of make sense. This is a lot what happens, uh, of, of what happens in the bodybuilding space. For example, for a long time, they would say fasted cardio gets you leaner. Wake up, don't eat anything, do cardio. Well, the, the reality is when all things are controlled, it doesn't accelerate fat loss more than cardio done later on. But the reason why it works for a lot of people is it's more activity. They eat later in the day. They end up eating less calories. So they end up waking up doing cardio, waiting two hours before they eat. And it just tends to result in behaviors that reduce their caloric. You intake. know what else is like this? Spiritual wisdom. Yeah. And people like you, you have somebody who is like a staunch atheist or agnostic and because they don't want to, they don't want to believe in the big guy up in the sky or something like that. They just discredit this whole, this whole book you know, that's been passed down for thousands of years that there's not like tremendous value in it or because it's told through stories and parables or whatever that, Oh, this isn't real. It's fake. It's, it's a bedtime story. It's like, man, instead of completely discrediting that, maybe there's something of value there that has been passed down for a very long time for a very good reason. And has stood the test of time. That's right. Look, and when, when somebody tells you something, when one person or 10 people tell you something, that's anecdote. Anecdote, yeah, can it be true and false? Yes, it could be either true or either false. When tens of thousands or millions of people over the course of long periods of time tell you something, that's now called wisdom. It's different. Wisdom is not anecdote. So if a culture has been doing a practice for a thousand years and we don't have any studies to support it, but they say doing this does this like eating this. I forgot what the, what the name of them, these, uh, medjool dates, uh, helps medjool dates have been used to help promote healthy labor and induce labor in women for thousands of years, for thousands of years. And people laughed at it. And then they did studies and said, Oh, look, these dates do ripen the cervix and help <laughs> reduce the risk of C-section. So, anecdote over long periods of time by millions of people that stand the test of time. It's no longer, in, the, in my opinion, the category of anecdote is now in the category of wisdom. And maybe the way they explain it isn't right, but it works. And it's been observed to work for a long time. So bodybuilding is phenomenal for that because bodybuilding's existed now for a hundred years. Um, and lots of people have done it. And you hear lots of quote unquote bodybuilding wisdom and the way they explain it might be wrong but there's something to what they're saying, especially if it's still something that bodybuilders continue to find value in, you know, 50, 60, you know, later, uh, years later. Yeah. You know? We just need better interpreters. I think you know, <laughs> yeah. like better people in the space to explain it on a, on a different level. I a, think another good one is uh, adrenal fatigue. Everybody yeah. made fun of adrenal fatigue. Well, now they call it HPA axis dysfunction. Now the way they explained it before was your adrenals get fatigued. And they get exhausted. Well, this happened to even the functional space with like the vibrating plates. And yes. know, I've always thought it was like a bunch of horse shit. But then it's like you realize that, that what that does to the central nervous system yes. and it actually allows your body to then, you know, it, it interrupts that signal and those governings that are in place to actually allow you now to drop in range of motion you weren't able to achieve. And, you know, there's all kinds of other benefits to it in terms of like, you know, stimulating the muscles that way. But like it just wasn't explained to me very well. Are you, are you guys watching? the the response to you know cold plunging and infra infrared and stuff like that right now no like, is there like a big counter movement yeah there's a big uh, counter movement right now so now if i post something it's so funny because we've been talking about this for so long now yeah but now i'll do a po i did a post yesterday of me getting ready to do the plunge and i was doing the red light and like now i start i get at least a couple people that almost always do. oh the, the the science is that's debunked or it's because it's actually gaining market share now I think it, yeah. it is it's not that funny yeah. it was like it's something that uh you know again like when you think about like cold plunging and stuff like that these are some things that have been in practices go for, disprove Wim Hof yeah good luck yeah no it's, no. no I just and and again now, uh, they'll, the they'll try and point to a study that is is measuring something very basic and simple in a short period of yes. time and, sure. it, and it can get oversold once something becomes totally. marketable yeah, totally. and sold they, then they'll sell fasting for example as the greatest way to burn body fat and it's different than cutting calories listen you'll like, never hear one of us on the show talk about replace that replacing yeah. exercise good nutrition sleep. good sleep yeah. good relationship i mean when you look at the hierarchy of things to do and focus on to move the needle yeah. in the in your journey of health, 
you'll never hear us say that this trumps that. Cold but, plunging gets you jacked. Yeah, you to know, think just, that it the, it doesn't come with tremendous benefits uh, is is hilarious to me now, and it's becoming kind of this no, movement you, to counter it. You, you, know? you know what it is? First off, because we've been doing this for so long, exercise, sleep, diet, you know, stress, lifestyle, those things are just there. There's nothing that'll trump those. I always find it cool when something else can cause benefits that isn't in that category. Like there's a non-dietary intervention, a right. non-exercise intervention, a non-improve your sleep intervention, right? That actually moves the needle to a point where we can measure it for things like recovery, muscle growth, performance, that kind of stuff. I find that fascinating and I'm going to talk about well, it. Well, I find yeah. it also fascinating too when you when you see, because when we, we talk about things like fasting or I talk about cold plunge, it's actually the benefits that I talk about are less to do with the benefits that it's being sold as a lot of times. Yeah. So yeah. that's when I get interested is like, oh wow, there's this thing that's in some sort of an intervention or outside the big rocks and only that has shown value towards building muscle mm -hmm. or, or, or losing body fat fat or overall health. And then it also has these other yeah. positive benefits. That's when I get excited. Then I'm like, oh, this is cool. This is like a, a small four minute practice. I can add three times a week into my life. And it has multiple different benefits that are, I mean, to me, that's awesome. You know? I feel like the, the, some of the biggest benefits of things like cold plunge are the immediate energy b boost. It's literally like drinking a cup of coffee. It's amazing. So I don't know anything that can give me that kind of energy other than a stimulant. And the second thing that I could see the value in is it does, it, it can definitely improve your tolerance to cold. Just like the sauna I'm gonna add improves to that, your tolerance to heat. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, and, and then immune system. Immune is best system, 100% for sure. Yeah. The difference in that, I've, I've seen a big difference. Also, too, how you handle day to day normal stress. You, uh, you know, I think like we, I think we've talked about before. Although have we had, we haven't had a breathing expert on here, right? This talked all about like breath work and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I mean, ha Wim Hof a little bit, right? Yeah, no, not, no one else. On we didn't go deep on that. No, but we, a lot of us don't even realize how we do this like shallow breathing all day long. That was the biggest benefit for me. Right. And you, in order to do that. You can't do that. And let me tell you, part you of why it's so difficult for so many people is to get into the to control deep breaths inside. Right. And for somebody that's not uh, super esoteric in terms of like being able to sit still and like, you know, have that meditative moment where it's like, I, I'm going to breathe and I'm going to get to this transcendent place. And you know, <laughs> I can't, I can't like, it's like, ah, like I have to fight it. Like that it forces me to actually get into that uh, calmness Dude, in that, it, in that place where I'm actually like, uh, I'm faced with the fact that this is going to completely smash me if I don't like succumb to it. That, and that is talk about, I mean, and that's not something that the, everyone's touting the Nobody's studies around. selling that. Yeah. No one's selling that, but what a tremendous value. If you recognize that already, they don't you're sell that, it cause it's not fat loss muscle. I know. Right, yeah. right. But that's, what's so funny to me is that there's, there's always this like counter. Then they're going to attach it to some six week study and be like, Oh look, when you actually, compare that to you know eating this uh you, or you increase your protein by 10 grams and you'll get just as much of recovery benefits no. as it's like and you try and throw it out for that one reason Dude, it's you like, talk about people suffering from anxiety depression and all these things going on mentally right now like this is a great like answer for people like me specifically who just like bury a lot of those feelings and just push it down a brace and like you feel like you can just like hit every obstacle with just like you know just bearing down like when that stops working with for you what do you do yeah you yeah. know like this is like an answer i remember yeah. when i first i first learned about like the importance of breathing because i know that what happens to you or how you feel will affect your breathing so like if you get scared you breathe differently than if you relax but also the way you breathe sends a signal to the brain and the body that tells you it's you can relax or you can get heightened okay so it's a two-way street i remember when i first learned about belly breathing i had this amazing uh, wellness expert in my studio who I would see do, you know, do this with clients and I could see the clients be like, Oh my God, this is so phenomenal, whatever. So I had her teach me. I went through it and I was like, wow, this is really remarkable. So then I did it on some clients and I was not prepared. I was not prepared for what would happen. The emotions. And stuff. They cried. Yeah. I, the first woman I had her lady, she was all stressed out and she was, I was always trying to help her with that. And I said, yeah. Hey, we're gonna try something different. Mm -hmm. We went into the front room that was kind of open, but dark. So it was quiet. I laid her down and I had her practice belly breathing. And then she started crying. 
Yeah. And I was like, um, I was like looking up, like looking for the other person. What do I do right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and she yeah. said, oh my God, that was so relieving. Like I let out some emotions I didn't know I was storing. And then it happened again with another client. And I was like, okay, this Which is this, crazy. This, this is so why I, I think it's actually the reason why it's gaining so much traction is, you know, of course there are, the, you know, things get trendy and there's yeah. that, there is that percentage of that. But it, I mean, it wouldn't, I don't think it would move and get as popular as fast as it is if it wasn't making huge impacts in, yeah. in people's lives. Impacts to where they feel it and see it. It's like, I, I don't need to sit here and argue yeah. studies with you. Go do it. Go well, do it for a month and then report back to me and tell me you don't recognize the difference. Naturally, you know, the things that like uh, get the most resistance are the ones that are hard, right? Like yes. compound lifts. Like, you know, there's always going to be this like Is there excess of studies that all of a sudden <laughs> pop up because yeah. it's like, you know, like it, everybody's doing it sees massive value, but the people that like don't want to do it because like, ah, it's hard, you know, it's like, why should I even do that? It's stupid. That's hundred percent. They're going to, they're gonna... you know, that's actually, I think, I think Joe Rogan said, they think they, who's asked about his routine of, because he cold plunges every morning. And there is something too, about the mental aspect of overcoming I, every, okay. I, I'm consistently doing this. You never want to do it. I never want to yet. <laughs> I've yet to go. Dude, like, it never gets easy. Yeah. It never gets, it's like every time I do it, it's like, I have to like convince myself. It's a, like it, I go, and there's something to be said about starting your day off with something hard like that, that you have to overcome that's difficult yeah. and setting the tone for the day. Cause uh, honestly, a lot of other decisions throughout the rest of my day are much easier decisions than that one. That one happens to be one of the harder decisions yeah. I have to make. In get the day. down to your underwear and jump in this freezing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And stay there. Yeah. It's like in the morning. Yeah. The it's uh, And so, I mean, again, I mean, how do I measure that, that and explain that in a, through a study, it's, it's really difficult to do that without just telling somebody, Hey, Go implement it into your life for a while and then report back and tell me if you've seen benefits from it. And I, I guarantee you will. All right, everybody. Today's giveaway, MAPS Strong. This is a strongman-inspired workout program. Here's how you can win it. Uh, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things. And if we declare you the winner, we'll let you know in the comments section. Also, we've put together these three workout program bundles, each one up to nine months of planned workouts, each one $300 or more off. Huge promotion. If you want to learn more or you're interested in signing up, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Do you guys think, because obviously the biggest market or the easiest way to sell a product or where you're going to get a blockbuster is in the fat loss uh, segment of our space, right? Fat loss is like, everybody knows. For sure. If you could show some fat loss or some benefit for fat loss, like that's the money, right? Yeah, easy but, path. But always. do you guys think that the anti-anxiety portion of our market is going to start to become more lucrative because anxiety is such a big problem? I mean, I think what we're talking about yeah. right now is an example of that. I think that that's why it's a part of why it's getting so much traction is I think so many people are affected by this like shallow breathing all day and high anxiety and stress yeah. and the practice of doing this and learning to belly breathe and take deep breaths and calm yourself is is proving to be yeah. of value to a lot of people even if you're not a big I want to build a ton of muscle or I want yeah. to lose a bunch of body fat person. But most people today can connect to anxiety and stress, especially well, you know, over the last I have couple of years. I feel like, you know, there's, there's, probably a growing amount of people that are like, what can we do besides pharmaceuticals? What yeah. can we do besides chemically ingesting things to solve some of these mental problems, anxiety and stress and, and depression. And, you know, like besides even like an exercise, of course, is like, there's going to be stuff for that. But I think that there's growing uh, interest in like uh, ways that you can do this uh, in um, like something that you can kind of do. That's not super crazy. I mean, that's the, I, I agree. My my, my my optimistic mind leans that way when I think about what just happened to us over the last two years that, you know, the, the one positive thing that may have come out of this is that more and more people are opening their eyes to like not waiting for the government or or our, our drug, pharmacy yeah. to come up with the next vaccine or drug and maybe they should start taking action themselves and find mm -hmm. ways to do that i mean i i would hope that that's what is is happening yeah i, I know that's my that's may my glimmer of hope that's still there. we might we might be hitting that soon because the percentage of people now that's on a pharmaceutical is high. I think if you look at all the entire adult population, maybe Doug, you can look this up, but I, it's probably 
if you look at the adult, what, like put put what percentage of adults are on a uh, a, a pharmaceutical drug or, or a prescription? You probably have to put an age. It's probably fifty percent above, above and, thirty or above just four. adults. I, I mean, well, I mean, I bet because that, that includes people. In I their bet 20s. if you go. Th- 30, and then that, that number is, then you go 40. Oh, up, and then it goes up. <clears throat> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. What did I it mean, say, Doug? 66% of okay. the. And that's US all adults, adults, you're saying. Yeah. All yeah. adults. Okay, so try something like this. No. How many people above 40? Okay, we're all 40. Okay, how many above 40? Are... Oh, I guarantee it's higher. The older you get. Oh, higher. yeah, no, I yeah. know. Uh, what I'm curious about is but the, how crazy. You know what the fastest growing segment, though, of the adult population when it comes to drug Anti aging? You know, no, no, the gra- growest, the fastest growing age group. In terms of being on a pharmaceutical, is a younger age group. Uh, 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 Older uh, people have, have been on drugs for a long time. Yeah, yeah no, I know that. People that's same, are that's same thing no, with posture and pain. It's crazy. Like back pain. That's what does it all. say, Doug? So nearly seven in 10 adults aged 40 to 79 used at least one prescription drug in the past 30 days, and around one in five used at least five prescription drugs. Whoa! 20, so close to 20% use five? Yeah. Wow. And okay. 70% are wow. on at least one okay, that are so, 40 and above. That's so why we may, we may be at a point now where, or getting to it, I hope, where people who have, have been using anti-anxiety medication, antidepressant medication, um, you know, stimulants or whatever for long enough that they're like, okay, this is... This isn't what I thought it would be. Like, have you ever talked to some? I, so I have family Bro, members. Bro, you know who, how you, it's cr- history's happening right now, right? 50 years from now, we will look back at this time in life when we introduced a lot of these drugs. And you know how much we're going to, how, how stupid we're going to think about ourselves? Because uh, it, unless they have better drugs, because he, he, well, <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, you're right. Unless there's something that come out that actually yeah, show, and that, that and unless they come out with a drug that actually shows a decrease in anxiety uh, and stuff like that in the population. But if you look, at, if you go, if you're going to go back and look at when, and I don't know the time frame of exactly when these drugs were introduced. But the idea of them was is to reduce anxiety and depression and, depression yeah. and things like that. And yet the curve is still on this thing. And so, like, even your hardcore. Science nerds will look back and go like, well, that doesn't anything. Add up. You know what's funny? Anything lifestyle related that we treat with pharmaceuticals has continued to get worse. Anything lifestyle yeah. related. So look at, and I'm not now. I'm not true? talking. Well, okay, I'm not talking about infections. Blood pressure. I'm not talking about disease, but look at uh, heart disease. Okay. Look at um, you know cancer rates, uh, dementia. Look at anxiety, depression. We have lots of drugs that you know, quote unquote, treat these things. But all the the rates of all of those continues to grow. So does that mean that those medications don't work? Not necessarily. I think what it shows is what's causing those things it is continuing to get worse. And we're not looking at the root cause. Yeah, there's a root cause. So yes. lifestyle factors affect all of those. If you don't change those lifestyle factors, then those drugs might extend your life a little bit, but they're obviously not going to solve uh, those problems. So I'm wondering if we're going to get to the point where enough people have been on Xanax for long enough where you'd be like, okay, I got to figure out a better way to solve my anxiety. I've been on, it worked at first. It was amazing. But now I'm like dependent on it. I can't go off of it. Like That's the hardest part. Yeah. Right? Is that once you become dependent on it, it's going the other direction. Oh. Even if you know better. Like, imagine, even if you know. And that, you're like, getting adapted and you got to take more. Yeah, imagine the, the money. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go down this necessarily this road, but imagine the, the, some nefarious executives in a, in a, in a board meeting at a pharma company. They're like, all right, we got this medication that, definitely gets rid of anxiety immediately. One of the problems is if you take it for more than 30 days in a row or six days in a row, you can't just go off because you'll get terrible, terrible side effects. So you're like, okay, well, so it kind of works, but then it's also addicting and then they can't go off. Like think like the money in that. The money of what, in that do you remember? Du- I think Doug, I we turned you on. I think them. you were the only one that actually watched that out of us. And I forget the name of it, but there was, I think it was on Amazon that did this documentary on the relationship of the rehab centers with the yeah. oh yeah. Pill, we all watched uh, some of that yeah did you i mean i watched the whole thing i don't know if anyone else watched the whole yeah thing. i don't pill remember the, the name of it yeah something was it like that i don't know let me don't let me see if i can that. find it, it. No, it was called that but see that was if you like, can find it I mean, it's covering. worth the watch if you have, i mean because the, the the it was all these grants and money available and so people yes went right. in, like california yeah. provides a certain amount of of grants towards people that are getting re- and it's like this massive hustle to the point where they are setting these people up. I mean, yeah. the failure rate in those rehabs is above, I think, 80%. Like, <laughs> it's crazy with them. Body brokers. Body yes. Bro- body yes, brokers. that's that it. it. <laughs> that is wild. That is worth watching. Um, Mind-blowing to me what... I mean, I have people in my fa- in my family that have used rehab centers before, so that completely shifted the way I think about something like that as a resource for somebody because 
how how nasty these things are and how much they abuse the people. They change too. They change how you qualify someone for some of these medications now. Like like uh, oh, bro, it's, been, it's, it's like getting uh, marijuana. Like, you know, oh, it's, not, it's like that easy now, dude. When I went, when I got my mar my medical marijuana card back, when you it's, had to get that, it's laughable. I remember I went yeah. in, yeah, my knee hurts. And the doctor's like, yeah. he goes, "What do you oh, have? Like, What's wrong with up. you?" I'm yeah. like, "Oh, uh, you know, it's like you have headaches." I'm like, uh, "Sometimes, okay." Yeah, <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is wild. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> thanks. You know, that's how it is, though. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's like that on that on side too, dude. I gotta tell you guys, uh, I had a a young stupid moment even though I'm old and I'm, I shouldn't be so stupid uh, the other day. So I was driving. Have you, do you guys ever get this? Like you ever having a moment where it taps into your 18 year old ego, which kind of exists there a little bit. Of course. And it comes out. And uh, especially then, driving. I shared that never. a while back where it raced the kid, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Bro, so I just did that. <laughs> so I was, I was driving. I was on, I was on my way here. I'm driving and this dude. And she let him borrow your gloves, Adam. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I'm yes, not going to go that dude, far. <laughs> did you, you wear them? Every now and then. See, it was a waste of money. I knew it. No, it's still <laughs> shut up. Every now and then I pulled. That's such an impulse buy. That so to, the the truth is <laughs> Only when you eat the cheetos. the uh, the reason why I catch myself not wearing as much is what I have found is it's I a lot of times I am drinking something when I drive, and so having the leather and holding like a, a, a diet coke or something like that is not ideal. With the leather gloves and stuff like that, uh, getting the wet moisture all over, and then I go over and transfer to the probably not the best move in, in the first place, and so. Yeah, I'm like, oh, that's probably not good. So I find myself taking it off and on, and I'm like, okay, this yeah. I use them a little less than I thought. <laughs> One glove, it, dude. So yeah. It's still cool to have, though. So, I, so, I, so you just have them there <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just yeah, to flex? Yeah. If I was going to raise some kid, I would definitely put them just, on. Oh, oh yeah, you look yeah. over. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> what, motherfucker? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> He's like, oh, never mind. So I'm driving. I'm driving, and this dude, this is early in the morning. It's like 6 a.m., 6.30. I'm going to the gym, and I'm driving. This dude in a Tesla like, comes up next to me and then just guns it. <laughs> And I'm like, ah, oh. and I felt that feeling that you get. Like yeah, every older, probably just got it too. I've every, noticed every older guy knows what I'm talking about. Where something inside of you, it's like either you go and you play a pickup basketball game, or some kid like says something to you or whatever, yeah. and you just feel this little like, huh? Let me show. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. okay. So he does this. Boom! He guns it. So I pull up. So then he stops at a stoplight because he hit the light, and I pull up. And there's no one around, and I was like, ah. Oh. Am I going to do this? See, that only happens to me when I'm in a certain mood. Like I, and I, well, and, and when we first like got like, uh, the cars, like I, I was like, dude, I was like on the throttle, you yeah. know, I was just testing it out like crazy. And then I finally kind of calmed down. Uh, but then like every now and then I'll just be kind of in, like, ah, like a little bit of an angsty mood and somebody will do that and they kind of come in. I'm like, I'm getting you. Well, I, so I pull up next to him and he's another older guy. <laughs> that's great and, and we looked at and the red, it was a red light and I look over at him and it was, like, this, it, was this one, it was this wonderful experience like he looked at me <laughs> I looked at him wonderful there was experience. no smile there was no head nod it was literally like a glance and then we looked straight ahead and we both understood when the light turns green, we're going to go. Yeah. So I put it in sport mode and, bah, and I you know, hit about 90 and then I took off. I was going to say, he probably stuck with you till <laughs> about 80 top. or 90. Yeah. And then I was That's gone. where those things are gutless. Yeah. They're super, everyone talks about off their the line. zero to 60. Yeah. yeah. They're really quick, but take that thing to 130 and see what happens. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then I, then I beat him and then I let him pull up next to me and then he gave me one of these. And then he, uh, you know, what, okay. Respect. So that okay, obviously, um, that has to be uh, like a form of, I don't know, this, uh, competitiveness amongst you know other men where you want to assert yourself as the alpha like it's a way of almost yeah like ten thousand uh, years ago was yeah, it horses that's like right I'd roll up next that's to right. you on a horse right. yeah, and, <laughs> you, and you would race on the race on the horse you know what I'm saying Can you imagine that and they look yeah. at Justin he's got his horse I'll like, be like I'm out dude my horses don't like me dude like, I'm too heavy <laughs> that's because <you're> <laughs> I tell you that hey. when I was in Iceland, dude, I was at the back of the pack. I was so mad. Wait, you like, rode a horse in yeah, Iceland? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you rode a horse in Iceland. Yeah, dude. It hey, was not oh, moved. Hey, his horse was looking at the other horses like, dude. Oh, <laughs> when I got on it, it oh, literally God. groaned. I shit you guys not. It was like, <laughs> <"Rrr."> I swear to <laughs> God. And then, and then it started walking over away, like trying to lean into the <laughs> fence. And I'm like, stop it. <laughs> Yeah, he's all. You're not supposed to put another horse on me. I'm supposed to, <laughs> I'm supposed to carry. Like, where's the Clydesdale? Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. That's I so didn't funny. even know you were a horse. Yeah, I got. Yeah. So we. You're we, the worst sharer. Bro, he is the worst. You you know, no, share, I'm you know, not. You guys you know, are the worst you know, interrupters. Was, you know, his son was hospitalized yesterday, yeah. right? Oh, he told me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I did tell I, him off air. Katrina. Yeah, Katrina said something. He went to you 
what? I'm like, like no, wait. no, Adam's gone. Let me show you what happened. <laughs> yes, it's, yeah. I want to hear You're this horse sensitive. story. So what did you guys do with horses? And first of all, why are you riding a horse on Iceland? That's weird. It, it was freezing too. So yeah. So what's the deal? Yeah. yeah so well, place. we did it because dude, we tried to like pack in as many adventures as we could because we were there with kids. And it's like you want to have like structured days and you yeah. want to have advanced and things. And so this was one of them where it was like. They have these these horses there that they just leave outside, which I think is crazy that they can survive in that kind of like cold <laughs> to begin with. So they're they're like hairy. They're kind of smaller. They're they're bigger than like ponies, but they're not that big. <laughs> you got a small <laughs> horse. Please, it's just it's please, just can thick. you put can you impose a picture of Justin on a pony? I think <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. No, dude. Please do that. I hope our editing team can do that. Yeah, I mean, I, they gave me like the biggest one <laughs> out of the little, mix. One of those mini ponies. I'm still thinking about a groaning when he got on <laughs> 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 <It's> just, <laughs> <laughs> just over it you know what i mean and anyway so me and, and of course so ever too like he was uh he he was on a horse that was like real young and all this and like was just like all over the place and kept rubbing into my horse and uh it was it was pretty funny like we both had the same problem which was uh stupid we both kind of like were adjusting our, our um this is different moments of the trip and so we we kind of took a trail that took us up towards the mountain range and then we went past some of these like houses in the middle of nowhere but it was like really scenic but it was it probably was like 20 degrees below below 20 degrees and uh, there's a wind chill and everything so we're oh all just like, oh, like on these horses like decked out in, in like as much like Ponchos. dude as much clothes as i could possibly wear and it was so still freezing so literally any exposed skin you're just gonna be like oh my god this is gonna be like like to the point where it like stings and it burns oh, you know wow. that kind of cold and so like ever at first is like adjusting his thing and i he's like somewhere else in the pack and like his his glove falls off right and so he's his hands like numb and like and then immediately he's just like hunched over i see him hunched over i'm like trying to wave for the guy to like grab it because like he had to go grab his glove and then i'm like the asshole that's trying to capture it on like uh, instagram and i'm like trying to like get a good video of it and everything and then and then my glove falls out and i was like oh no and so the guy had to go back and get mine but i had mine off for a long time like it was probably like 10 minutes before i finally got my glove back and i was froze. like dude it was it was claw. painful yeah it was the point where i couldn't even move it and I felt so bad. The horse in your glove. position. He's all, nope, nope, nope. He's like, Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> Classic like influencer mistake, right? <laughs> uh, but so we get back and like Everett just like, and he was being a soldier and he's just like, uh, you know, just kind of hunched over. I'm like, you're all right, man. It was brutally cold. And he's just like, you know, just starts crying. I'm like, oh man, I'm so sorry. We're trying to warm him up and everything. And then he finally, like he kind of gets, we, we get all these like hand warmers and everything on it. And then he kind of comes back and he's like, that was so much fun. It was amazing. Wow. And like totally bounced back. And so I was like, wow. Good for him. Man. Good he, for him. So did he, uh, did they give him his own horse? Is he yeah. Was, oh, he's, so he's he has his own horse. Ethan has his own horse. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So we were cool. all just kind of like, you know, going on this trail. But uh, <laughs> Justin was dude, in a wagon. <laughs> <laughs> I was behind everybody, dude. That's I mean, funny. yeah, we were like twenty people. Do you, like, when you when you go on trips like this with your kids, do you bring um, like food, like a magic spoon and stuff like that, just to make it easy? Do you do, you do that? Yeah, uh, yeah, I do. Uh, and they they like magic spoon. They like uh, they only like the uh, the fruity flavor. Like, and of course, I thought you guys were not bringing the, it on like a thing like that though. I'm you not about horseback riding. No, 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 no. Oh, you mean general, general, like when you're traveling to the horse? Yeah, I'm like, we well, not doing that. <laughs> I had, no, I'm like, talking about when you travel. Oh, I had, like three different items I bring a lot, but yeah, that's one of them because breakfast is a big one, especially. Uh, he eats ever eats most his calories for breakfast. Like he, that's like the entire. So you want day. to take advantage? Yeah, dude. It's like if I don't like uh, get that covered early, like I'm, my whole day is like screwed. With speaking him. of 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 calories, uh, I've been DMing with some people who are find it tough, uh, difficult to eat enough calories, which is not a common, not as common as people who who want to try to eat less, but it is an issue for some people. They just can't eat enough. And I've been recommending Magic Spoon to them because it's so palatable. That's, I love that as a it's an easy as way. a post dinner yeah. thing. Yeah, I it's love like, like to have dinner yeah. and then like and an it's hour later. It's yeah. like I mean that's how I, I replace my choice of ice cream is what I would I would prefer to have at the time. But having something that's loaded with 
30, 40 grams of protein post dinner makes me feel like I'm getting this kind of dessert. And it tastes like Fruit Loops. Yeah, yeah. it goes down easy. And so I I love it for bulking. I really do. I think it's, mm -hmm. I think to increase calories because it's so palatable and then you get that much protein, I think it's dude, a, after dinner cereal has to become a thing. Yeah. So I'm, well, I'm on board. What do you mean that. it's been a thing? I mean, I'm just saying like, nobody's time. like, actually, no one really admitting kind of markets it. to that or yeah, says that. I mean. And it's totally a thing. I, that's, uh, I, it's I like have, when Jack in the Box finally realized I've had Magic Spoon more post. You know, or after seven seven p.m. than I ever have before nine a.m. Like when I was a kid, I, I always I've ate had, cereal had at night. It later. When, that's what I did when I was. I a kid. rarely ever have it for breakfast. It's not a normal but breakfast. Is normally like I say, like I talk about all the time, where I we take meat from the dinner and I scramble it with some yeah. eggs. Magic Spoon is normally post dinner type of snack. Dude, speaking of like bulking, cutting all that stuff, there's a gym in Colorado, and I can't say that I didn't try to think of that. I didn't come up with it or think of doing this at some point as well. And I'm sure you did too, Adam. In fact, I think we talked about it. There's a gym in Colorado called Break the Stigma Fitness. Have you heard of this place? Mm -mm. You go in and they provide you, they have bongs and pipes and, <laughs> and vaporizers, and they, they provide you with weed. And you smoke or vape the weed before, during, what? and after, or before, during, and or after your workout. Remember, we were going to, we, we had wow. scheduled uh, Ricky Williams to come on the show about, three years ago and it all fell through and we we're just like whatever it wasn't that big of a deal um although i would have loved to interview ricky williams i think it would have been cool oh yeah um but he was opening one of the first gyms like that here in san francisco oh yeah so he was part of that so he's he's tied into a bunch of i, stuff I don't him. quite understand it um yeah. I, I never understood cannabis as a workout no aid. i mean i'm but know, some I mean, people swear by it. cannabis no. and yoga maybe or like some I've, stretching facility yeah I maybe so i have like i have friends that are that are pro it and and they're, they're these people aren't going to like me saying this but it, it tends to be the people that uh advocate for smoking weed so much that they they don't even they're see the it. people that everything is better when you smoke yeah weed. <laughs> yeah and yeah. so you ever see that movie you ever see that movie on weed it's yeah. like they're 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 using it multiple times a day yeah. every day type of deal and they're like and, oh and, man i'm gonna work and out this is like another way they justify yeah. being high basically all day long is oh there's some benefits we've there's this study shows this or that it's like ah, come on i I'm a, I'm a fan of cannabis and uh, i don't see a lot of training performance that doesn't mean there's not an, ex an exception to the rule doesn't mean there's somebody who has suffers from crazy yeah. anxiety or something that the weed yeah there could be down. applications yeah i'm not going to say that there's not but pairing I think, with fitness is interesting and in fact when you a watch, majority of people wouldn't see well more benefits from when you watch the videos the of this this gym and i'm not knocking it's a gym so you know fitness is fitness they'll always support it but you could see the people in the video they're like stoners. They're not fitness people. <laughs> they're like hacky sack and yeah. <laughs> doing curls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, oh my God, I Justin. See that, right? Yeah. Justin, right? did you see, I showed you, did you see what? Jamie Lee Curtis, what happened to her? No, no. Oh, oh you told me about bro, this, dude. What happened to her? Bri oh. This is weird. Okay. stuff why are celebrities like so messed up like so why, she, why do we find out all this stuff she posted a picture or a video from inside her house on instagram on twitter i think it was okay. and people saw something weird in it zoomed in and in her house there's a painting and it's a child in a a naked child in a luggage disgusting what? and they were like what the hell kind of painting is this and then she deleted it immediately that's in her house. Yeah. Do you have an image of it, Doug? Oh, you don't want to see it, bro. I mean, really? Yeah. I mean, and it's not like it's just—it's not a full-on. You don't see like the private, but it's—it's—it doesn't look good, bro. It, it's like why and would it's not one of those out? things where like you—you uh, you can't really make it out. No. And somebody's trying to make like it's obvious. No. Oh, like, well, people in the comments, right? They were able to pinpoint the artist. Oh, the, like, even the who background. The okay, so yeah. it's clear enough to know who the artist is, bro. It, it's like you're gonna why would anybody hang this up just wait till you see it okay zoom in on that picture if you what can what the Doug. fuck why would you have that hanging on your wall why would anybody put that I don't care who you are or how valuable it is potential whatever that's a that's like a creepy looking painting why would you have that in your house? You know what's funny is, and then that's nice. so funny how the media immediately will, will, will like lambast you as this crazy right wing conspiracist or whatever. Yeah, look you at that. Mention Hollywood and pedophilia. What the 
Fuck. Why would you have that in your house? That's awful. It makes me, like, just looking at it, take it off, though. Looking at it for two seconds makes me upset. The, you're hanging the, that in the, your defini house? the definition of it is that, it, like, a kid playing in the water. Like, that's, that is not, that looks creepy No, as man, fuck. it's a kid in a suitcase. They, there's uh, Ellen DeGeneres. Did you hear about her? She did this, like, video. You know, they do the videos, and they're at home. Like, hey, everybody, blah, blah, blah. Well, in the video, people paused it and saw paintings and shit in her house. That is, it's weird stuff. Yeah. Like it's creepy stuff, and it, it, it all points to like abuse and child abuse well, and weird shit in her house. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. These here's the thing: lizard people are real, dude. If you well, here's <laughs> the thing. Yeah, like uh, it's it's hard for me to talk because like I went through a, a spell, like, especially in college, where I'm like looking up all symbolism of things and like like how that that was used a lot, like back in the day, and it was, it was very much of like how they identified, um, you know, different like cults or different like um you know uh secret societies or different things like and then you see the way that like cities are structured the way that like um megalithic uh structures are are yep. erected like very yep. it's very deliberate and, and to, to think that you know all of that just stopped in the ancient or times. it's a coincidence or yeah and, and then it's and then using those the same symbols and then bringing them in uh, you know, like, and you'll see it in movies and you'll see it in people's houses. And like, and it's just like, okay, like, yes, you know, maybe it's coincidental, but also too, if I, if I keep seeing patterns, I'm just a person that pays attention to patterns. That's all. I just watched a video where there was this ex CIA agent. I don't know if we'll be able to find it, uh, but this ex CIA agent talks about how they get, uh, influential people to do what they want. So like CEOs of big corporations or um, celebrities. And what they do is they organize or they show up to these parties or like Epstein Island or whatever. And they catch these people in compromising situations, take photos and videos of them. And then they say things like, oh, you want to do that? You want to say that thing? I don't think you should. Mm -hmm. Oh, you still want to? Well, then we're going to, we're going to let leak this to the media. And it's a photo of you with this underage person or you cheating on your wife or whatever. I mean, and that's a very, that's an old strategy. It's a very, yeah. very old strategy. Well, yeah. Since forever. I mean, like the, with the honeypot, right? Like yeah. even for spies, like they would like use sex as a so way where, to get information. Where is the, where's the retired CIA agent person who's got some sort of a moral foundation who wants to bring light to this stuff and doesn't care. He's going to be ostracized. We'll never and talk about it. Could you, yeah, okay. But, first of all, if you're in it and you know what they can do and you have a family, do you think you're going to say anything? You know the power and the influence. Well, you see Angelina Jolie's video of like what she described about the satanic ritual. Yeah, I mean, so there's videos that are out there. Yeah, pull but up Ellen's they uh, like weird. House completely get like dismissed and like, you know, people are just like, oh, you know, they're just making this up or or whatever. I don't really know how they justify it, but it's uh, creepy. I know. Well, I, the way they the okay the, from what I see is it gets dismissed because it's so crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy that you're just like, oh, that's got to be somebody who's, you know, oh, that's what you know those right wing nuts always say about those people, or it's a it's a conspiracy theorist type of thing. Like it, that's how they dismiss it, almost. And it, it seems just so. I think it's because it's so blatant. Mm -hmm. Like it, Ellen's doing a video in her house and she got stuff like this. You got Jamie Lee Curtis she's doing a video and she got, like they ain't trying to hide that. Obviously, I mean, people come over to their house like you're doing a video like if it was something you're really trying to be shady about so i think that's the the what people use to argue it is like well Listen, so, the, she, so it was I really heard, something evil and bad and shady and she not why would she do a video so show? i heard uh, oh, i heard i read this is all now that we're going deep into this space <laughs> or whatever <laughs> okay. well. i read that it is as part of their cults or their whatever that they believe in karma. Okay. Oh, by the way, there's a painting that was on Ellen's house. I don't know if you can what expand is that? that, Doug. What is that? I can't. I see scales. Is that a hangman thing? Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's zoom in on it. And there's some meaning behind it. People have broken it down and talked about what it is. And it's satanic and all that stuff. I don't know if you could read. There's a caption. If it a says bloody, anything, a figure holding a bloody hand. Scales of justice. Uh, the, yeah. Bloody hand, bloody crotch area. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It's weird so i read that that as part of like th this it's not eat pray the, love these, that's all i know it's <laughs> not eat pray love <laughs> it's not chicken soup for the soul yeah <laughs> exactly like can we just be like normal yeah. it's gonna have like blood yeah. love laugh we yeah, live or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. i so Kids i read suitcases and shit like, i read that these satanic cults or whatever they believe in in karma so in other words what you put out you'll get back and the way you get away from that 
or you avoid getting it back is if you tell people what you're going to do. So by putting it out and telling people what you're going to do and doing it in a way to where people are like, huh? You get away, then you avoid the potential of it coming back to help, to get you. I mean, so there, if you make a song talking about, I mean, about there's shit so that much, you're tr there's so much truth in that. Katrina and I talk about this when we talk about before we met each other, like in, so they don't in, hold on to the guilt. In previous relationships, one of the things that we both had in common when we were going through our single phase in life was, you know, radical. I mean, that's part of why core value. One of our core values is radical honesty. Like uh, you see how much further you can get away with stuff when you're just blunt and straightforward about it. Like, you know, Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm dating five other people. Like how many people have the ball, like how many dudes or girls have the balls to be honest about something like that when they're out meeting people. And it's amazing that you, I mean, of course it's incredibly you're incredibly rare. You're, yeah. you'll, you'll meet somebody who'll be like, Oh my God, I would never date you if you're dating four or five other people or you're talking to other people. It's me or nobody else. Okay. That's fine. But there's a lot of people that like respect that. And they're like, you know what? I'm in the same phase of my life too. I don't want to settle down and get married. And so I'm okay. And you could literally be like, yeah, Tuesday I have a date with this girl and I'll see you on Friday. And and being honest and upfront about it, you get away with so much more than if I were to act like you're the only one. And then she yeah. finds out I'm on a date with somebody else on Tuesday. And then she goes crazy. Yeah. Right? Well, okay. So sleeping of, uh, speaking of, uh, sleeping. Okay. Know, For, Freudian a little there. bit, <laughs> speaking of, uh, of who's got the balls. Here's a study that just got shared with me. <laughs> Who's sleep sleep duration is associated with testy size in healthy young men. Okay, so they found the conclusion yeah, that there's a positive studies. linear and possible inverse U-shaped relationship between sleep duration duration and testes volume. In other words, more sleep, good sleep, is con connected to bigger balls <laughs> 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 and less sleep or not good sleep. Smaller what, balls. What are you like? Who so comes that up one in yeah. combination with the ugly guy, right? Like, you're, yeah, you're packing. Ugly, right, if, you're ugly get, sleep, hey, if you're ugly and get good sleep, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But I don't oh, know if that means balls. penis. I think this is balls. No balls. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah just no, balls. Was, but I mean, both those were balls, though, aren't they? This they is both all, are balls. Yeah. This is balls. So is the other one. So oh is, yeah, the ugly. Yeah, if you're, you're ugly. Yeah, they're both big balls. So if you get if you're ugly, get some good sleep. And yeah, get some, yeah. get some boulders. You'll have some, yeah. some yeah. levels yeah. on yeah. you, bro. And if, you're, and, yeah. and if you're really good looking, you probably need to focus on yeah. some sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get some sleep. Probably get some rest. Hey, hey today, today's episode is also brought to by Organifi, right? So, uh, oh, I have a. Um, I want to tell you guys. So we have um, we have a friend of ours that's a vegan. That um, one of the challenges that vegans have is obviously getting high quality protein. So I took some Organifi protein from the back over here and gave it to her. And, um, she, she doesn't work out or anything like that. So it's not like she's trying to build muscle or, but she's relatively health conscious. Anyway, um, a week into it, she's come to me and she said, she notices a difference in her energy just from adding a scoop or two scoops approach. It's like, I feel better. I feel healthier. You know, the thing yeah. that I find and most she don't normally doesn't supplement. So she was obviously low in protein. The say. thing that I find most interesting about vegan protein is that because i i'm not i prefer whey right i prefer whey it it tastes better you know how i am with that stuff but i can't um i can't double up on whey so if i'm behind let's say like like i say i'm 100 grams behind i'm like oh i'm, I need to, I'm gonna need i'm going to do a protein shake right now and i'm, I'm gonna do double too serving. much if i do double serving it'll it'll mess my gut up i can do one okay double mess my gut up because it's from milk I, I assume Dairy, because yeah. I can, because with vegan protein, with Organifi, I can do two, yeah. three scoops, yep. no problem. And it doesn't affect me the same way. Yep. I haven't tested like the bone broth one that Sal always ran, uh, raves about, but I know that I've, I've learned that about myself with whey protein versus vegan protein is if I, I can have whey and so I can have dairy in moderation, but if I, if I overdo it, I definitely will, will feel a difference versus vegan protein powder. I can double, triple up. I can for most people. It. Yeah. Yeah. Most people, it's easier to digest or they find it easier. I'd say many people find it that way. So actually, Adam, I want to ask you, you, you mentioned some statistics on chat GBT earlier. Oh yeah. I want you to bring it up on the podcast. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, this I'll give is you, crazy. I'll give you the oh. numbers that, yeah, and I, crazy. I, I had seen something similar to this already, but I mean, I did a post actually just talking about like the, that. It's crazy to me that there's people that are still sleeping on this man, because I mean, listen to these numbers, right? So the this was like a little chart on the time it took these companies to reach 1 million users, some of the most prolific companies in the tech space we know, right? So Netflix, three and a half years it took them to reach 1 million users. Airbnb, uh, two and a half years to reach 1 million users. Facebook, okay, 10 months to reach 1 million users. Spotify, five months. Instagram, two and a half months. 
iPhone, 74 days. Chat GPT, five days. <laughs> That's how fast it spread. A million, I wonder what that now. Oh, I know. It's got it's it's probably compounding That's it. Crazy. It yep. is this is version so, version one. Now obviously, the shittiest one. I heard that the, that they were gonna go for another round of funding. They're opening it up again, but like the valuation now is insane. Like Twenty billion yeah. compared to like them not even really the revenue's it's not, not really making there. anything. It's yeah. free. It's, yeah. it's losing. It's, it's, it's losing like a million dollars a day. A or day. Yeah. But, but people see that. I mean, like, because I mean, the whole game in tech was to acquire users and, and there would be companies that would be in the negative for years uh, just to try and acquire the users to then prove that now we're going to be, uh, 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 you know, Do you make guys, money. I don't, a lot of people don't realize this. This is very, so we, we always, we've, we've been talking about chat GPT and, and what that could mean, you know, like, like big macro scale, but just, in the immediate kind of future, the close future, people don't realize how, what, how much this technology is going to upend the internet just from here, from this simple fact right here. Many of these internet companies like Google, one of the most profitable companies of all time, they make their money through advertising because they give you a bunch of search options. You ask for something, you search, and you got a bunch of options, and that's how they make their money. Yeah. ChatGPT just gives you the answer. Yeah. So that means that Google, which will in my opinion, in a lot of people's opinion, is going to get crushed by something like ChatGPT. How are they going to make money? How do you make money when you just give someone the answer? Yeah. So they're going to have to figure out ways they're to- gonna, They're going to- uh, yeah, They will, gonna Facebook, um, Amazon, all these, they will create their own system within their system. So that's like, so the 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 open AI is like, this This technology can be used by any company. Yeah. We can adopt it and u utilize it. They did it that way in, intentionally. And so, in order and in order to monetize it, this is, here's where the legal battles are going to happen. Well, a private company is going to buy it, right? Which means that they can't. Nobody else will be able to use it's it. That's what the money, right? I mean, I think I think the the future the is exactly really how is we're trying fold. to use it, right? Yeah. How we're looking into right now, integrating it into our our ecosystem. So basically, anything of that, we, same thing. Like Facebook will do the same thing. Amazon will do the same thing. Google will do the same. They will have to to stay relevant, or else this will yeah. surpass it as far as its ability to give you answers. And the fact that it gets more and more accurate as as you use it and input more and more well, things. Well, because, I mean, you're already seeing, like, with Alexa being in the home and then, like, in your car, you can, like, voice command and all. Like, it's just applicable everywhere you go, like, to have it integrated. Yeah, yeah I, I'm trying uh, to to challenge myself to, to utilize it because I do think, too, so, you know, this is a, a funny uh, kind of comparison or analogy, but... One of the things that, uh, you know, that Sal is better at than any of us by a long shot is how he Googles. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's a better Googler than Doug, right? And Doug's got to Google for us. There Champion. is a skill. There's yeah. a skill to how you prompt it to give you yeah. ex what you're looking for yeah. to make an argument for whatever case. Sure. That same type of skill set is going to be required for chat GPT and the people that will get the best stuff from it or utilize it the best. They're going to know how to prompt it the we'll, best. No, how to prompt it. I was trying yeah. to, I was getting kind of frustrated with our marketing team because I was trying to, I was challenging him on like, are you really diving in? And he kind of dismissed it a little bit. And I'm like, bro, like seriously, like you need to really dig into it. And, and, and instead of like trying it one time and going like, ah, uh, that's okay. That's you prompting it. That's not it. It doesn't have the capability. Well, yeah, it doesn't can't read your mind. It's it's not it's, not yet. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. but if you if you prompt it generic, you'll get the best generic answer from it. The more detailed your prompt is, the more crazy it'll give you. And I was showing my other buddy this, and I I made it write a, a love letter to his wife, and <laughs> I I said so I did a generic one first, good friend that was like really good, and then I'm all now watch this now put in there that you have two kids together and what she does for a living and like and it just included all and that. so then it includes that information and then it becomes very personalized it definitely felt like it came from him he's all needs to be realistic can you write this in the form of an eighth grade education <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which by the way you could prompt that to do that you could. you could do that right and it would be like so i love you like the rain yeah so for the, for the <laughs> silly people that are still sleeping on it that think like oh Roses it's not red. it's okay yeah. or it's not it's like dude that's because you can't prompt it very well dude that's you, so weird that's so weird speaking of the, the the technology that it could utilize do you guys know that they could They've done this where they can uh, hook up electro. I don't know how they do this, actually. I think it's with electrodes. And they can create images based off of your dreams. Do you guys know that? So you, you'll have a dream and a computer. Maybe Doug can look this up. It, so, there's a computer that will pull up an image. 
Do you have those probes like, uh, are they like monitoring your brain while this is I happening? think it has to do with picking up brain waves and they have to like, they have to coach, they have to train the machine. So like you have to picture something, tell the computer what you're picturing, picture something else. So then it starts to be able to read your brain waves. So then when you're sleeping, it will create images of what you were dreaming of. So essentially it could read your mind. So this technology obviously is in its infancy, but at some point, <laughs> this could be able to read your I don't mind. want my dreams out there like that. Yeah. <laughs> I've had some messed up ones, you know? I see ponies and pickles. <laughs> That's weird, <laughs> Justin. Weird. Why do you have ponies and pickles in your, in your <laughs> dreams? They go together. Yeah, did you find it, Doug? Yeah, so this mind-reading algorithm can decode the pictures in your head. Look at that. It's a new pr uh, computer program uses brain activity to draw images of airplanes, leopards, and stained glass windows. What? And there's some pictures here. That is like wow. someone thought those, and then the computer drew it at the bottom. We we are literally this close to like magic. <laughs> <laughs> you guys realize that? I mean, AI kind of feels like that. You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> it's really close. Like, I'm gonna start like working on a wand. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I I really want to know what's gonna get really uh, upended first, or it, or will it be like? You know, I'm trying to remember. You back. know what I think is going to be upended first is as uh, how we advertise, how you advertise on Facebook, on on Google, on that stuff. So okay, so how are you going to advertise? Okay, so the all in guys were were speculating on like where this is going to be like really valuable for companies like us. Is like you're going to integrate this AI and it's going to crawl all the the users that are interacting with you and learn their behaviors to where it starts to change the website to how it delivers it to each person. Like it knows, okay, so let's say <laughs> wow, somebody- Wow, Mind Pump's programs no, think about are perfectly designed somebody, for my Somebody goals. who, uh, you know, buys this program, this program, and this program from, and from us. And listens to this episode. Right, and that. listen to these episodes. It, it, there's a 95% chance these are their goals. Da, 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 da. And then, then all of a sudden- what suits best for you. Right, yeah. and we have all that content. Right. So then now it starts to feed them exactly what they need to, to Mind hear. Pump, the program for 45-year-old moms with kids who went off to college. Oh my gosh, this is like the perfect podcast. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, the the people that learn to- That's that, wild. If you have a business already and you've already created some, what of a, an ecosystem of, of people that are interacting with you and your business, um, learning to integrate that into there can be unbelievably about, I mean, also not just for like, I mean, of course the mind goes to sales and making more money, but even just to like, uh, like giving your customers a better experience, like less of, they're going to get less of what they don't want and more of what they well, really want more experience. specific and, and curtailed to and them. And you give them a better experience, you sell more. Right. I mean, so that's, they go hand in hand. Exactly. You're yeah. right. It's, it goes hand in hand. Oh, uh, shout out. Let's give a shout out to our friend, Rob Wolf. Yes. Oh, Go to his page, oh, Das, D-A-S, Rob, with two Bs, Wolf. He is fire. Yeah. Rob Wolf goes, he's a very smart dude, very, very smart with nutrition, guy. very intelligent. Yeah. Also uh, can be quite controversial, which is why we enjoy he, him. The so only much. reason he does not have millions of followers is because he's, been, sh shit yeah, he's been shadow banned like crazy because yeah. stuff, but he's a great- he's Find a great. him and follow him. He's and we, we've done some episodes with him already that were good, but we're due for, a, a, it's been a couple of years since we, we linked up with Rob. I'd love to get him on. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's no, fighting he's, the good fight over yeah. there. All right, check this out. You've probably tried CBD products and you probably weren't impressed. Well, that's not like the company we work with called Ned. They use full spectrum hemp oil extracts. Now they do contain CBD, but they also have other cannabinoids. So you take their stuff and 30 to 45 minutes later, you literally feel it. Like you feel the anti-anxiety effects. You feel the euphoric effects. You feel the anti-inflammatory effects. This company has real stuff and it really works. Go check them out. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the code mind pump for 15% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Mike Plum 94 I've been doing conventional deadlifts for a while now and have noticed massive improvements. I've seen a lot of debate as to whether rack pulls or conventional deadlifts are better for back development. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, um, so a rack pull is, um, is, go is good if you're, first off, it's good on working specific ranges of motion. It can involve the hips less so that you're getting less of the posterior chain. And you know where this comes from, right? Bodybuilders who don't want to, who want to make it easier. Usually. Well, I mean, they don't say it's because make it easier. They, they don't want their waist to grow. So they, they take more of the hip hinge out of it to make it more back heavy. 
by taking rack pulls, and then mm, then that's their yeah, argument is I we see. take out the more the hip dominant part of the exercise, so your hips, so your waist doesn't grow. Bodybuilders always trying to isolate, right? It's yeah, it's a it's a dumb idea. I mean, uh, rack pulls have value, and they have value when you have a sticking point yeah. and you're using it to complement the like when you're doing lots of deadlifting. One of the things you have to be careful is not over over training and deadlifting too much, right? And so, you know, let's say you have a, a like your low back is 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 pretty fried because you went pretty heavy on Monday, and then again here you are on Wednesday, you're going to deadlift again, and you're like, I just don't. Here's a chance where I might rack pull because I want to give my low back a little bit of 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 rest, right? And then, but yet still train train uh, deadliftings or something that complements my deadlift. But the what you're seeing, if you're referring to like the bodybuilding community that, you know, advocates for rack pulls because it hits more of the back than a conventional deadlift is this this idea that conventional deadlifting is going to grow your waist and and that's not good for competitors. Yeah, that doesn't make sense because with the rack pull, you it's can dumb. add more load. You're still going to load the waist, I guess. I mean, you're not going to grow your waist any substantial yeah, I would imagine anyway. that's part of it too, is just the ego portion of being able to load it quite substantially more. That feeds well, into it. Maybe, yeah. you know, you know, you know what I think? I think with bodybuilders, they don't know where to put deadlifts because yeah. most bodybuilders, high level bodybuilders, train in these like body part splits where today is chest and shoulders and tomorrow's biceps and triceps, and then it's back and then it's chest and then it's legs. And they look at a deadlift and they go, What day do I put it on? Leg day? Or back day. And if I put it on back day, what about leg day the following day or before that? And I think that's one of the big challenges. The truth is for 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 most people, conventional deadlifts is your best bet. Rack pull should not replace conventional deadlifts. No. Now, do I think rack pulls have value? I do. Yeah. I think pulling from different um, heights and ranges of motion is phenomenal uh, for for back and strength development, but as a as an adjuvant, as as something that you add to your conventional deadlifts, yeah, not to as a to complement your deadlift training. I mean, you'll never find a power lifter who doesn't utilize uh, deficit deads uh, and rack pulls. Right. Like when you're when you're deadlifting at such a high volume, you know. Back to my original point, like one of the things that I always had to kind of check myself on is like this desire to want to keep loading the bar and lift yeah. more. And I was deadlifting three times a week back then. And I, you can't lift heavy deadlifts three times a week all the time. And you, I'd have to start to change at least one or two of those out with like lighter weight deficit deadlifts one day or rack pulls another day to give my body and CNS a little bit of break on hammering at all time on deadlifts. But what this person is talking about, they're referencing the bodybuilding community that tries to justify the rack pulls as Instead a, of. a better back development yeah. exercise. It's like, no, conventional deadlift, bro. You'll be fine. Next question is from Mr. JB Brown. I want to do the advanced version of MAPS 15 and have an easy curl bar at home, but not a straight bar. Are there any significant differences between the two types or would I be okay using the easy curl for the exercise? Yeah, so easy curl bar isn't going to work very well for bench press uh, for squats for deadlifts because the bar is shorter and because it's got those angles in between, you're not gonna be able to place it very well on your back. Like when you do squats, it's gonna be hard to grab. Easy curl bars are great for curls. I prefer them over straight bars because when I supinate yeah, really position, hard, yeah. sometimes it doesn't feel great on my wrist. And this is probably based on morphology. Some people are okay with it. Some people aren't, but that's pretty much it. Like trying to deadlift with it's a short bar. It's really short. It's not going to be able to hold as much weight. Um, you might be able to deadlift with it. Maybe. I can't because it's, the, it's I mean, too here's, narrow. Here's, but the, here's the thing. Stuff, no. We've talked about this before. Like, no exercise done safely is a bad exercise. Deadlifting, bench pressing, squat. I wouldn't recommend any of that stuff. Yeah. Could you? If you have, Is it better than you doing absolutely nothing? Of course it is. I mean- for the time being, you could try and do it with these things, but then I would be asking for my birthday if somebody could get me. I mean, does it kind of remind you guys of when uh, we had those like sand loaded like like plates? Oh, when we were kids. It, yeah. yeah, when we were kids, and, and then the bench was literally this wide, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we were like this. <laughs> so I mean, we tried our best to make it work, uh, and it's not ideal, but like it's, to be able to do all those exercises with the easy. <laughs> curl bar would, you know, it's going to look silly and it's going to be uncomfortable and weird. Yeah. Imagine but squatting with that and, and how would you rack it? Like a squat rack won't allow you to you rack wouldn't. it. You would have to bar. do a weight that you could press and set down. That's right. what I mean. Like you could do, so you could, you could row with it. You could 
press with it, even though it's going to be more like an in-close bench press. You could deadlift with it, even though you're not going to be able to load it that much, and you'd you'd probably grab wide. Yeah, I'll on grab there, on the outside, so the on the outside, yeah. right? Uh, so I mean, there's definitely like it, literally. Okay, if I was stuck in prison, yeah. go and do I, some and house work for somebody e to get a, a an easy bar. curl bar. Yeah. Like I, I would find ways to squat yeah. with it and deadlift and do stuff with it. You know, you can buy, like, and these aren't going to be the the greatest, but you can get a straight and use. You could get a used straight bar for cheap, dude. Yeah, yeah. 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 You for can cheap. you can buy one on Amazon for. 40 or 50 bucks. You're not gonna be able to load it with more than 400 pounds, but this person probably isn't. So I would, uh, I'd just do that. Go on. Amazon. What, Doug, what are you saying? What do we misunderstand? So I grabbed this question and I, I misunderstood it. I was actually thinking about for curls, you know, is there a difference between the easy curl bar for curls or for, why did you word it differently than what the person put? I don't think so. I think I just misread it. So, okay. So okay. read it to it. So, so no, so no, my, saying, so my question was, and the reason I was attracted to this question is curls, you know, what's the difference between curls with the easy curl bar or a straight bar? Yeah. Oh, and can they be substituted? Yeah. Yeah. Very, very slight position. difference. Very slight difference yeah. with the easy curl bar and a straight bar. And really, it's a, it's a, it's an issue of comfort. Mm -hmm. And I prefer easy curl bars again because most bars people do. And same. a lot of that actually is the wrist mobility. Like a lot of people lack the uh, the ability to completely supinate really comfortably like that. And yeah, with the you know, bar, it honestly, really puts pressure. On yeah, that. and the straight bar forces you to do that because how often do you completely supinate your hands? And yeah. we should be able to do that. So to me. If you choose the easy curl bar because it's easier all the time and straight bar bothers you, okay, for the time being, yes, do the easy curl bar, but that's also a flag to you that you probably should do some wrist mobility work. So it's so it, it, it might not be wrist mobility. It, there's also some morphology. So when it comes to supinating, when you look at the bicep attachment, where it attaches on the, I don't know which bone of the forearm this is, the ulna, I don't know, but it, it where it attaches is going to dictate how much you can supinate and how much you can't. I would never, ever... Tell a client that said that to me, like, okay, then let's just skip that and let's not work on your wrist mobility whatsoever. To, to, the, the morphology argument is like the people that try and make the morphology argument on the way they squat with their stance. There's always room to improve mobility there. And if I have a if client has an issue, cannot grab a straight bar and curl on it, the likelihood that it's their morphology that's keeping them from that. And even if it is their morphology, the likelihood that we can't make improvements by working on your wrist mobility to me is so that naive. so supination would be um, I don't know if you'd call that wrist mobility because the wrist isn't isn't bending it's the it's the forearm that's twisting, but this this one actually is quite common, which is why an easy curl bar is so popular. There is there are big differences in the attachment of the bicep, one of the heads of the bicep. I know I looked into this not for me for clients, and where it attaches. Uh, I again I can't remember which bone I'm referring to. But um, where it attaches will determine whether or not a full supination or partial supination is. is well, I'm better. not necessarily saying that there there's not a situation. Just like there's not in the squatting argument that I made. There are morphologies that make a different difference. Where well, people a can't. squat but is, what a, is, I've, a, is a I've fundamental movement, though. I've experienced. Yeah, you're right. But I've experienced personally myself uh, the ability to comfortably do a straight bar curl and then to be very uncomfortable in doing it mm -hmm. and what I know is when I'm not putting the the work in mobility wise I struggle with doing the straight bar and mm -hmm. it's a little rough for me to do it when I'm putting the work in I it's comfortable for me it's fine so I've I've had both been on both sides of the, this fence and so if I had a client that was at, I would definitely be addressing do both yeah next question is from Kay Turnit. How can I keep my body from swinging when doing hanging leg raises due to core stability issues? Or is there an alternative movement to replace these? If you can't prevent your body from swinging a lot when doing uh, yeah. leg raises, then move to a different exercise. Regress, yeah. Yeah, I would go to reverse crunches. Yep. Reverse crunches on a flat bench would be the, the biggest regression. And then moving up a decline bench would be how you progress. And eventually you can move to hanging leg raises. Not everybody's going to be able to do them. They're really hard, mm -hmm. like properly, but a really good hanging leg raise looks very controlled. It's not the swinging back and forth that you see people doing. It's definitely not the CrossFit, whatever they do. I don't know what they call it, but when you're doing a real hanging leg raise to work the abs, you come down and it's very controlled, minimal swinging. And then when you come up, you get this pelvic tilt and that's where the where the abs i've really never been a fan of training these with clients i think you can get such a good oh i, I can't on I, reverse i think i had like two clients I ever did this way. yeah i mean yeah. if you're hella good at this like okay then i'm not going to tell a client to stop but most clients uh, you put them on a, a reverse incline and and holding on yep. and roll up 
You're oh, better off. Oh, oh. Yeah, the only time I even really cared about these is when I was really working on like a lot of like levels up to get towards these like front levers and back levers, things like you're trying to do for like gymnastic moves and like sort of like the prerequisites for that is like so if I'm hanging and I'm trying to you know maintain that kind of control and stability while also then like yeah like an getting, iron cross type of deal. yeah like you're working your way up levels of like calisthenic. Uh, you know, intensified movements. It makes sense. But like, I think people just see people doing it in the gym yes. and they're like, that's really hard. And then they try and emulate it and they're not even getting good activity in their, their core. They're getting like all oh, hip flexor and everything else. Yeah, even when could, I'm at the peak strength of my abs, you won't see me do this. Really? Oh, I do them all the time. No, no. Yeah. When I'm at, when I'm at peak strength, I can still make an incline reverse curl unbelievably. Yeah. But the, cause you can raise it up like uh, what's like, you know, what's that called? Uh, is it dragon? Dragonfly, you call that where oh, you dragon dragon flag. Flags. That's not a yeah, but that's a whole other ball. That's yeah, but I, it, but what I'm saying is that's how you could progress a reverse lane crunch on an incline, and I would yeah. do that before I would go over to leg raises. Well, for building muscle, a really good controlled hanging leg raise. It's it's there's very few ab exercises that'll give you that much resistance. And if you if you I mean you can obviously you should regress until you can get to the point mm -hmm. where you can do one or two that are good. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. It's totally fine to hang and do one or two very Slow. controlled. Yeah. Yes. Well, and they build the abs. They do build that. And nothing built my abs more than that. Yeah, and I think too, I mean it's definitely it's the control. It's the stability part of it. So to do like like a hollow body position, like just to be able to maintain that all the way from your fingertips to your toes and have that kind of stability control. Like that's where now it's like, okay, maybe not going to apply this towards like a hanging bar situation. Bro. Next question is from Sukraj 93. Should you start a MAPS program over if you've had to take a week off due to illness, travel, et cetera, or pick up where you left off? Uh, um, just a week. Yeah, it depends. I, I mean, just pick, I just pick up if you're sick, I would probably do like a week of easy working out. It depends how you feel. If it's like vacation, I would go right back to it. I mean, listen, you have, you, we, we've, we've already talked about the study already that referred to the group that every three weeks they took a solid yep. week yep. off. And so a week interruption on a program, no is, big deal, no big deal at all. In yeah. fact, maybe good for you. your point is good is a good point is if you were really sick, then what that week back might look like, like I might repeat the last week that I was on yeah. and, and do it really light and easy um, the week coming back from being sick. And then when I get to week two, I'm now back where yeah. I, I left off. But to start a whole program over a, a one week only, uh, that's no. not that long of a time frame. No. If you gave me a really long time frame, yeah. I'd have a totally different protocol. I might even just suggest MAPS 15. It's a great like you know momentum builder to get you back on track. Yeah, a lot of people... Well, especially, well, I should say a lot of fitness fanatics, if they take a week off and they weren't sick, so they went on vacation, they actually come back stronger. Mm -hmm. A lot of fitness fanatics find themselves coming back stronger, in which case, you, you know, you jump back where you left off. You will get sore. The soreness definitely um, becomes more pronounced, but you'll find that you're actually stronger. The only time I would take an easier week to get back into it is if you took a week off due to injury or illness. But if it's just a week off for travel, vacation, or because you just missed You'll the gym, right back. Then, then yeah, I would go, I would jump yeah. right in. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have fitness guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me, for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 